Yo, what is going on guys? In this video, I'll be breaking down that Noah So Cold effect. I'm sure you guys have heard of Noah So Cold. He's a pretty well-known music video director, and I feel like he has a lot of unique effects as well as just cool effects that you don't really see in a lot of music videos. So I wanted to break down that masked out effect where we have a bunch of masked out layers that's pointing from the top of the composition. So here in After Effects, I'll be using clips of camo from his music video. And for the sake of this tutorial, I'm only going to be masking out six different layers in the Noah so cold music video he had like a lot more than six layers that he masked out but for this tutorial we'll still be creating that similar look with just six masked out subjects i have seven layers in total the bottom layer is going to be the background layer which is the actual video that's going to be playing and then on top of it we're going to have our masked out layers pointing from the top of the composition so make sure you have a clip where you have your subject performing and in my case i have our subject here on the right so that's going to be the background layer and then all the other layers that we have chosen are going to be the layers that I'm going to freeze frame and then eventually mask out in order to create this effect. So you want to choose at least six layers that you're going to be masking out in order to create this effect because we're going to need a lot of shots of our subject. In my case, I just chose these clips and I also added markers to each layers just so that I know where I want to create that freeze frame. If you don't know how to add a marker, you can just go to layer, go to markers, click add marker or click this button on your keyboard. So for the first layer, I decided to add a marker for the first frame of this layer because this is the frame that I want to use in order to mask out our subject. Make sure to go through each of your layers and just add a marker in whatever frame that you want to freeze frame. After adding the markers, you want to then click that layer and go to time and click freeze frame. So now as you guys can see, that first frame is a still image. Now moving on to the second layer, because I added a marker on this part of the layer, I'm going to right click that layer, go to time and then click freeze frame. So now that frame is a still image. So make sure to freeze frame all of your other layers wherever you added the markers. Okay, so now that we freeze framed all of our layers, we should now have six different layers that are still images. And because we're going to be masking out all six of these layers, what I'm going to do is just move all these layers back to the beginning of the timeline. Since we're masking out all of these subjects, we want to make sure that we see all of them at the same time. So now what I'm going to do is just turn off all the layers above our first layer, and then we're just going to mask out our subject for each layer using the pen tool. Okay, so I masked out the first layer and you can also just turn off the background layer for now. And you definitely want to make sure that you spend time accurately masking out your subject just so that the effect can look as best as possible. So now you want to do the same thing for all of your other layers. You just want to mask out your subject using the pen tool. Okay, so now I have all of my masked out subjects and it takes a lot longer than expected. And what I'm going to do is just get rid of all of these markers, select it and click delete all markers. And then what we're going to do is grab all these layers and just extend it all the way so that it reaches the end of the timeline because we want to be able to see the freeze framed layers all throughout the timeline. I'm also going to turn on the background layer and in order to create this effect what we're going to do is create a triangle like shape with our subjects just like in the Noah So Cold music video where we have one subject at the top and then two at the middle and then three at the bottom just so that when we're creating this effect we can create it in a way where we have all of our masked out subjects pointing from the top and it's kind of pointing towards our subject here in the background which is our video. Video. So what we're going to do now is just look through each layer and then we're going to select and choose which one we're going to have at the top and then which one in the middle and then which one at the bottom. What I'm going to do is just turn off a few of these layers and just look through which one I want to have at the top. So just look through each layer and see how you want the layout of your composition to be. So as you guys are creating this, you definitely want to adjust the scale as well as the position for all these layers. So I'm going to have my setup like this and you can have yours however you want as long as it forms a triangle. And if you still see the bottom edges of your subject, that's completely fine because once we animate it, we won't be able to see the bottom edges of our subject. We're going to now keyframe the position as well as the scale for all of our masked out subjects because in the Noah's So Cold music video, as the animation was happening, all of the masked out subjects were slightly moving a little. So we're going to create a similar look as that. So just keyframe the position as well as the scale for all of your masked out layers at the start and then we're going to go towards the end I'm also just going to turn off the background layer for now. For the layer in the middle, I'm going to have it scale in slightly. It's going to be really subtle if I play that. As you guys can see, it has a, a subtle movement to our masked out layer. And then for the position, I'm just going to have it keyframed slightly towards the right. 
grab those two keyframes, move it towards the end, and then grab all the keyframes and easy ease them. For this layer, I'm going to keyframe it and also have it scale in slightly bigger. So I'll have it at 82% and also just have that drifting a little towards the right. I'll have it like that. Move those keyframes towards the end. Now, if I play this, you guys can see that there's some movement with these two layers. Make sure to easy ease all four of these keyframes. And I'm just going to do that for all of my other layers as well. For this layer on the left, I just keyframed the scale and increased it by 5%. And since it's on the left, I'm just going to have it slightly drift towards the left. Grab both of those keyframes and make sure to bring it towards the end. And then easy ease all of these keyframes. Same with this layer here on the left as well. I'll increase the scale and have it at 96%. So I'll just increase the scale by 6% and then just have it drift slightly towards the left. And then for the final layer, which is in the middle, I'm going to increase the scale by 7%. And then I'll keyframe the position in a way where it slightly drifts towards the middle. And then it slowly rises up. Grab those two keyframes, bring it towards the end, and then easy ease all of those keyframes. So now if I play this through, we have all of our mass subjects slightly moving. And if you don't like the way your subjects are moving, you can always just adjust it and just modify your position and your scale keyframes so that you can make it look the way you want it to look. And this is what I have for now. And I like the way it looks. So what I'm going to do now is just turn this background layer back on. And then I'm going to create a new null object. Go to new and create null object. Also just going to change the color of this null object. For this null object, you want to center it in a way where it's in the center of all of our masked out subjects. I'll just have it like right there at the center. Enter. And then we're going to grab all of these masked out layers, parent it to that null object. Now, as you guys can see, we have full control of all of our layers. What I'm going to do is just decrease the scale just by a little. I'll just have that at 85%. And I'm also going to rotate it so that it's pointing from the top of the composition. So I'll rotate that. 140 degrees also just move the position of it so that we don't see the bottom edges of our composition. I'm going to have mine positioned like this. I'm also just going to decrease the scale just by a little. I have that at 80%. Move it a little towards the left. Now, as you guys can see, we have all of our rotoscope subjects hanging from the top of the composition. We're going to now create that blur zoom in effect. So create a new adjustment layer. For this adjustment layer, I'm going to add a Gaussian blur to it. For the blurriness, I'll keyframe that at 20 at the start. Go forward 30 frames. In order to go forward 30 frames, you can hold the shift button on your keyboard and then click page down three times. So one, two, three, and then keyframe the blurriness back to zero. Click that adjustment layer, click U to reveal the keyframes. Grab both of these keyframes, easy ease them. And then we're going to create that zoom in effect. We're going to add a transform to this adjustment layer. And by adding this Gaussian blur, it creates these transparent edges so what we're going to do is just scale in our entire composition just by a little. I'll scale it in at 106. So now, as you guys can see, everything is completely filled and we don't have any transparent edges. So for this transform, I'm going to keyframe the scale at 106. Click that layer, click U to reveal the keyframes, and then go towards the end of that adjustment layer and keyframe the scale slightly into about, I would say, 120. Grab that keyframe and bring it towards the end of the timeline and then grab both of these keyframes, easy ease them. And just to make it a little smoother, I'm going to grab this first scale keyframe and just move it one frame back. So now, as you guys can see, it's one frame back of that adjustment layer. And now, if we play this, we have that slight zoom in effect with the blurriness in the beginning. And this part isn't really important, but for the background layer, I want it to be a little slower. So what I'm going to do is just right click that layer, go to time and go to time stretch, increase the stretch factor to 400. So now if I play this, our background video is playing in slow motion but that part isn't important. I'm just doing this for the sake of the tutorial because I want everything to just feel more of a slow motion. And that is all I have for this video. I plan on creating more tutorials on Noah's so-called effects because I think that a lot of his effects look really dope in his music videos. So make sure to drop a like. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.